Welcome to my channel and this video. I hope that my thumbnail sketch attracted you to this video. I wanted to promote and talk about this book, Inside the Mind of Sherlock Holmes. I'm going to do this the old fashioned way. My videos are pretty much low key. I'm not going to have all these other images coming and going. I studied the brain a lot, taking care of my mother, and I wrote a graphic memoir myself, which is about ready to be published. It's called Mom Remembers Me, about how I used my health and fitness knowledge to stop my mother with mild dementia from forgetting me, and it worked. And I'm going to be selling the book pretty soon. I'm going to be doing it individually. I'm not going to go to a publisher. They, they take too much of the cut, and I don't want to give them that much of the cut. So... In the process, I started reading a lot of graphic books just to get back into art, and I loved art growing up, but I didn't think I was good enough, and now looking back, I was good enough, <laughs> but I didn't think I was good enough. It's just one of those things, and it was one of the very few compliments that my mother gave me. So take one of the things I put in my book is I think caregivers should use some form of art to help you with caregiving. And if your caregivee has some form of art, it could be anything, music, woodworking, drawing, painting, right? Maybe get involved with that with them to keep their brain. So my mother was a really good social dancer. She could also lead both parts, you know, for all ballroom, country western, so she could do both. So, But I really look back, and I think when she stopped going out um, social dancing, that's when she started to deteriorate a little bit. So if I had realized that, I would have organized ways to get her to dances, even from 3,000 miles away. But in the process, I started going out to paint nights, side drawing. And then I started reading a lot of graphic books, and I started to add on to my channel about reviews of graphic books. And this one is one of my damn favorites. I emailed the artists, and I can't pronounce it even though I am a quarter French, but I'm at best, it's Benoit Dahan, no, Dahan's probably wrong, but I emailed him, and he was gracious enough to answer my email, and gave me permission to review his book on my YouTube channel with my very few number of subscribers, so if you aren't a subscriber, and you like health and fitness, and graphic books, and art, and bullet journaling, and journaling, and memory, and the brain, <laughs> Then if you could subscribe, I would really appreciate it. But I thought I would share with you some of my favorite parts of this book. Like I said, this book is fantastic. The artwork is fantastic. So I'm going to show you some of my favorites. And then what I do to improve my art is to copy some of my favorite. And I love copying faces of some of the characters, especially when they have really cool character faces. So there's some really cool ones in here, which I'm going to show you. So, this is the mind of Sherlock Holmes, and I'm, of course, you can always pause the video to really look at this a little closer if I um, don't get it so you can see it, but you can see the artwork, and I think, in a way, reading this book is better than even watching a movie, because you have time and buying this book and rereading it several times and really look at it. You can see that there's a lot involved in this artwork here. Let me show that to you again. Sorry, I started talking to you. So I'm trying to make sure that you can see it in the lighting and I hope it's okay. But if you have any specific questions, by all means, make a comment. I would love a comment. Let me know if you have any other questions. But he's kind of combined a lot of great artwork and he's also combined some Mad Magazine. So like, look at this. And then look at the character of Sherlock Holmes and what his face looks like, right? I mean, it's amazing. <laughs> and the way he's thinking, and it kind of lays it out for you. He, he, it's really, really methodical and giving you the clues that he helps, that he um, uses to solve the crime. And it, it's a really, and I'm not going to obviously, not going to be a spoiler alert, because I would, and if you can't afford this book, I would highly recommend that you ask your library to buy it. So I actually borrowed this from my library. Because my library a lot of times is looking for ideas to, from, to buy books. So almost always when I request that they buy one. So if you can't afford this, and I don't know how much, I think it's, um, I can't tell how much it is from the back of this book. But see the artwork, it lays it out, so it goes, goes slower. You can create your own mind map of all the clues. 
And I always tell my students, I teach health and fitness for the past 30 years. I always tell my students to create a mind map. You can't learn things just from text and linear. So to create yourself a mind map. So, so this, this is one of the characters that I drew in my book, which I'm going to show you. But see the bottom, um, the bottom of the guy, the big nose. And if Benoit, you're watching this and you make a comment, it would be really cool if you developed the characters' faces by what they are. I was thinking about that because sometimes the characters look like animals. But, you know, so you've got the, uh, some other kind of goofy looking characters, but you can't tell if they fit the but what their character is. So this this guy, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but just think about if the face looks like what the character is, right? Like I said, art is fantastic. Here's another one. And it is kind of not, I want to say old school, but not really old school because it's just so pretty too. This art is amazing. I want to aspire to be as good as him. I'm going to show you guys a few more and just encourage you to, um, you know that looking at pictures is more of a challenge for your brain than playing chess. So if you are thinking about drawing, and you know, remember, drawing is a skill just like math and reading. So when people say they never can know how to draw, it's just like saying you don't know how to read because no one taught you how to read, right? It's all, it's a skill that can be learned. It's just like everything in life. If you want to learn it. I mean, I always think about physical fitness. You know, there's a one of the physical fitness principles are specificity. And I get people all the time coming up to me and say, how do I get better at jump shots? Or how do I get better at downward dog? And my answer is you do downward dog and you practice your jump shots, right? So same thing with drawing. When you want to get better at something. And I also have seen some really good videos about just copying it without really thinking about and of course, with health and fitness, you want to know your anatomy to get better at figure drawing. So I already have, I know my anatomy. So if you are a fitness professional and want to learn how to draw, and of course, if you're an artist and want to get better at your figure drawing, learn your anatomy and, and of course, exercise, right? We got to exercise. I don't believe that exercise is good for weight loss, but it's good for everything else. When it comes to weight loss, you got to stop putting the junk in your mouth. Stop eating processed, simple carbohydrates, right? More pictures, more pages of the great artwork and some more of the characters, right? So I'm going to show you the last one that I'm going to show you that I copied. See on the deep side there? That's, those, that's my cross, which... When I drew him, he looked and ended up looking like the planet of the one of the one of the apes on Planet of the Apes. And I kind of realized from copying this book, since most of the characters weren't symmetrical in their facial expressions, I found that easier. And drawing the symmetrical was a little bit harder for me. And this is the last one I'm going to show you because I don't want to do a spoiler. This is the magician. Look at the artwork on that. I would encourage you. It comes to history, and there's so many nonfiction books about every anything under, everything under the sun. I also have some other books that I have reviewed that are similar to this that have good, really good at work. So this, I thought I would share with you. I spent the past two days drawing all these characters, and I have to tell you, I am pretty proud of this. They all came out really good, except for this one. See, that's the Mycroft one that I. Supposed to be symmetrical. One of the eight. Original Planet of the Eight. The Charles Reston. I have this symmetrical. Copied fonts in the Sherlock Holmes and copied all the other characters and wrote it in there. So you can always pause. But that was a lot of fun. Practice my cross bench, and that's why I think that I should work on my symmetrical. I am going to maybe do some more videos on Adobe Fresco. So my graphic memoir is different. I didn't draw all the panels. I used photos of my mother and I, and then I drew the other characters according to what they were like. I mean, I had a doctor who did not listen to me and did something that was 
unethical when it comes to medical industry. When I asked him why he did it, you got to read my book to tell you, tell you, tell you. I asked him why he did it, and his answer was, that's just what we did. So I drew him like a robot because he didn't really think. He just followed. They did. There was no time to do any observation on my mother. So let me show you my pictures one more time and so you can enjoy. I really enjoy, you know, copying different character faces. And some awesome ones here, right? So if you want to improve your art, and of course, visualizing, drawing it while you're reading it is also going to help your art, as well as I read in the memory books, if you read it out loud, and I've also noticed that myself, I have a video on improving your memory, and I really think that's re saying things in out loud. So I have a little tape recorder near my bed, and I say, my to-do list into that and half 90% of the time I go do it before I even listen to it again in my tape recorder because I said it out loud so if you're having trouble remembering first I think if you if there's a graphic book about some kind of part of a history or something see if you can find that as well as reading it all out loud so thanks a lot for listening I hope you like my low-key video here not with all the all the um, images coming and going that really isn't good for your brain because it, it distracts you we really can't multitask. People think that you can multitask. And job advertisements always say they're looking for a multitasker, but you really can't. So thanks a lot for listening. Nice and short and sweet. And I love this book. Thanks a lot, Benoit, for writing it and for, for responding. And I hope you make a comment and at least like and let me know what you think. Thanks a bunch.